The 1920s, or the Roaring Twenties, as it has been called, is when we place the setting for As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. It seems to be a strange match, however. The Twenties are marked by a huge economic boost, rapid technological advancement, and movement from farms to cities, which is pretty much the opposite of what we see in As I Lay Dying. But in As I Lay Dying, Faulkner uses language and dialect to his advantage to create meaning in his book, and it has everything to do with education during the time period. In the 20s, rapid industrialization and the development of a consumerist economy and materialistic society caused a huge migration from rural farms to places such as Chicago, New York, Detroit, and Seattle. All of a sudden, the large majority of the U.S. lived in cities as opposed to rural areas. Education was also known to increase and improve a lot during the 20s. The general trend was that more kids were being educated at a young age and more children were likely to move on to secondary school than on to college. Here's where we run into a problem. Because this whole educating the public thing was new, there was no federal government standardization on it, and therefore no federal funding for it. Public schools were able to work when they were able to be supported by state or local taxes. Because the masses were in cities, there was a larger money inflow there, and therefore better education in cities than in rural towns. In rural towns, people were mainly poor, and there was likely no school for them to go to because they could not pay for it. This is where we start to get dialect. Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines dialect to mean a form of language that is spoken in one particular area and that uses some of its own words, grammar, and pronunciations. This is easiest to explain through soft drinks. Let's say you had a can of Sprite. If you were from the Midwest, the Plains, or the Northwest, you'd call it pop. If you were from the Southeast, you'd call it coke. And if you were from anywhere else in the U.S., you'd call it soda. These regional differences in what people call soft drinks is a lot like dialect. People call it something different based on where they're from. Now, on a grander scale, education in the 20s is where you get a rural southern dialect. Because of less education down south, their speech was more likely to be grammatically incorrect, and they would pronounce words differently. The stereotypical southern dialect includes grammatically incorrect words like ain't and y'all. What this does for modern literature in the 20s is important. Literature at this time was going through a huge shift. Authors were moving away from the classical way of writing and starting to ignore the norms. You see the emergence of stream of consciousness narration and grammar being incorrect on purpose. Because authors like Faulkner were embracing this change, Faulkner is able to use southern dialect to make the setting come to life for the reader. Because the language is more accurate with the intended setting, it's easier for the reader to understand and it makes it more convincing. And as I lay dying, you are able to tell that they are from the rural south because of the way that they talk. Let's start with Jewel, Tull, and Ants. With these three, the way they talk has more to do with setting than with anything else. On page 15, Jewel says, And now them others sitting there. And on page 17, Ma ain't that sick. Then you have Toll on page 29, With no man mislikes it more than me. And on page 30, With I want to worry none. Then, especially with ants, starting on page 105, you see long stretches of grammatically incorrect words and sentences, especially when he says, I says I got some regard for what folks say about my flesh and blood, even if you haven't, even if I have raised such a darn passel of boys, and when you fixes it so folks can say such about you, it is reflection on your ma, I says, not me. I am a man, and I can stand it. It's on your women, folks, your ma and your sister, that you should care for, and I turned and looked back at him, and him sitting there, laughing. Faulkner is clearly using regional dialect to create setting, but he is also showing their low levels of education and how others see them because of it. Peabody, a doctor, is shown to be an educated man not only through the fact that he is a doctor, but also in the way all of his sentences are grammatically correct and through his larger vocabulary. However, Peabody is clearly mocking the uneducated family members by making their language sound worse than it does in the character's own chapters. An example of this is on page 42, when Peabody is saying what Anse was saying to him. Jules taken gone, he says. Can't nobody else kitch hit. You'll have to walk up, I reckon. Peabody is using phonetic spelling to make Anse seem dumber than he is, and Faulkner is using Peabody to show the way higher class people look down on uneducated lower class people. Vardaman is a different case. Faulkner uses short, choppy sentences and stream-of-consciousness narration to make Vardaman actually sound like he's as young as he is. Only a six-year-old could make sense in their mind of what he says on page 53. The trees look like chickens when they ruffle out into the cool dust on hot days. If I jump off the porch, I will be where the fish was, and it all cut up into knotfish now. 
I can hear the bed in her face and them, and I can feel the floor shake when he walks on it that came and did it. That came and did it when she was all right, but he came and did it. Faulkner also uses Vardaman to show the extreme dysfunction in the family, especially when it is revealed on page 31 that he cusses a lot, and like a grown man too, at only the age of six. Next, we have Dewey Dell. She talks much like her brothers and her dad, using ain't a lot, but what's most important about Dewey Dell is the way others perceive her because of the way she speaks. Page 241 is where we reach the plot point where Dewey Dell is desperate for an abortion and McGowan is going to trick her. Dewey Dell is an uneducated country girl, clear in the way that she uses grammatically incorrect language and because of a likely southern draw. Therefore, to McGowan, she is uneducated enough for him to fool into giving him the large sum of money for the abortion she wants, without actually giving her one. This shows the likely more educated man from town believing that someone with such a dialect is uneducated enough that he can take advantage of her. And in this particular case, he wasn't actually wrong. Lastly, we have Darl. Darl is a strange character in that he is part of this uneducated rural family, but the way he speaks is 100% grammatically correct, and usually he is pretty profound. An example of this being on page 50, when he says, The sound of the saw is steady, competent, unhurried, stirring the dying light so that at each stroke her face seems to wake a little into an expression of listening and of waiting, as though she were counting the strokes. Pa looks down at the face, at the black sprawl of Dewey Dell's hair, the outflung arms, the clutched fan now motionless on the fading quilt. However, judgment comes from both ends. Educated people will judge uneducated people, but it can go the other way, too. Often, people in Darl's small, rural hometown think that he is queer, lazy, pottering about the place, according to Cora on page 24. People often think that Darl is crazy, and eventually Darl does go crazy on page 253. Darl says about himself, Darl has gone to Jackson. They put him on the train, laughing, down the long car, laughing, the heads turning like the heads of owls when he passed. What are you laughing at? I said. Yes, 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 yes. He's talking about himself in both first and third person, and it is very hard to make sense of. This way of writing it, or language, also shows the author's ability to provide a realistic depiction of a person going crazy. In As I Lay Dying, Faulkner is able to use language and dialect caused by lack of education in the rural South during the 1920s to create a setting that is more engaging for the reader, while also showing how people would often judge each other solely by the way they spoke.